Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and today we're gonna talk about interpolation and stylus. Now I'm gonna give you a couple of quick examples about how you can use interpolation to take uh, perhaps an operation on some strings or some values and use them within your CSS property. So check it out, we're gonna get going on that now. So let's take a look at this mixin we had created before, which generated our border radius with a WebKit prefix. This is actually a perfect example of when you can use something like uh, interpolation. So here we have this border radius mixin that's essentially looking for uh, just a radius and it's grabbing that radius and throwing as WebKit border radius and then just border radius. Well, let's say we have another CSS property that also has uh, WebKit, Mozilla, uh, and things like that prefixed. Well, we're gonna be creating another uh, mixin that looks just like this with a different CSS property having those multiple prefixes. So using interpolation is a great way to sort of cut down on some of this repetitive code that you end up writing over and over again. And what we can do is actually create a mixin that adds vendor prefixes to things. So let's go ahead and add that before this border radius and we can just call this vendor. And in here, we can give this two arguments. We wanted to give it a property and we want to uh, look for an argument. So we can just say arg. So now what we can do is actually output the text from that property using these curly brackets. So for instance, if we wanted to remake this border radius, uh, we could actually just have our property variable in here just like this. And then right here, we could have our standard arguments here, which is going to be our value. So what this is going to be doing is essentially outputting our property that we pass in and then our arguments. Now what I wanna do is actually get rid of these uh, properties that we have within this mixin already and we're gonna call our other mixin. We're gonna call the vendor mixin so we can say vendor and then we can pass this a couple of things. We can pass in the actual property name that we wanna give it. So that's going to be border radius. Okay, and let's actually pass this uh, the radius that we're gonna be passing into this mixin already. So we can say radius here like that. Okay. So now what you should notice is that our compiled CSS has now changed from just saying border radius and Moz border radius. It's actually just outputting border radius 20. Uh, if we look back at our stylus sheet, you'll see that we're passing 20 into the border radius right here, just like this. And in our mixin, it's getting that radius and passing it into the vendor mixin using border radius. Passing it into this mixin right here, it's outputting a uh, border radius as the property and that's interpolated as a string and then it's outputting the argument which is radius. Okay, so you may be wondering, well, this is now more code and we've got less out of it. So how can we make this more efficient? Well, we can do things by adding our uh, vendor prefixes here. So we can say hyphen webkit. And then immediately after that, we can then use these curly brackets with the property again. So let's do webkit hyphen property and then arg. Upon saving this, you can see that our now output value is now webkit hyphen border radius. So this is really cool because we can just simply copy this line and then change this WebKit uh, to Moz and Moz, just like that. And now anytime we're using border radius, it's also giving us the Moz border radius and the WebKit border radius. But let's say we wanted to uh, expand upon this even further and move into something else, right? So another CSS3 property that could perhaps have vendor prefixes for older browsers. So let's say we wanted to use a transition mixin. So we can say transition, right? And then we're gonna pass it some arguments, which is just gonna be args. And the output of that is going to be vendor. Uh, and then we can use this as transition again, comma args, because these are gonna be our arguments. And let's save that. We should now have a transition mixin that's going to be using the same vendor mixin 
And without having to do anything extra, it's going to be adding in our uh, vendor prefixes without us really having to do a whole lot extra. I mean, if you think about using something like Compass, right, in, in uh, using SAS, Compass takes care of these vendor prefixes for you. And there are things with Stylus that can do that as well. However, this is the ability to build your own version of that very easily. Like, this could not be any easier. So now let's go ahead and add a mix in where we're saying transition. Uh, I have to spell it correctly. Transition. We're going to pass the value of all 0.2 seconds and then ease, just like that. Now, if you notice when we save this one, it's really only getting the all property here. So we can't use the transparent mix in in this case. So we can uh, basically wrap this in parentheses like this. Now it's accepting all of these values as one argument. And now you can see that the output is transition all 0.2 seconds ease, WebKit, transition all 0.2 seconds ease, and Moz. So with this one little mix-in that we built right here to add vendor prefixes, it's now going to be able to add vendor prefixes to any sort of mix-in that we throw it. So now that we've seen interpolation, you might be wondering, well, what's the strength of this? Why don't we just have the word property here instead of our variable itself. Because if we do that, you'll see that the output is actually outputting the text property. Uh, because it's the first part of a declaration and it's not the value, uh, uh, Stylus is basically seeing this as straight text. By wrapping this text in these curly brackets, it's telling Stylus, hey, this is an actual text, it's a variable. So you should be outputting that variable as a string as it's the CSS property. And the arg here doesn't really need that because it's the value already. So this is just a quick example of how you can use interpolation within your Stylus documents. Now you can do this to create all sorts of helpful mixins that can then be used within other mixins or perhaps it's just something that takes some values and is outputting that for you. Uh, pretty much the, uh, the boundaries of what you can create with this stuff is really just up to your own imagination. And like I said, with a lot of this stuff, it's really worth your time to go explore other people's stylus packages and see what they've created to get some examples and some ideas to create some cool things for yourself. As always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video or hit us up at Twitter or Facebook at Level Up Tuts. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.